1999, the pop punk group Blink-182 released their third album, Enema of the State. The band's previous album, 1997's Dude Ranch, helped increase the band's popularity due to their appearance on the Warp Tour and their single Damn It. Enema of the State shot the band into the stratosphere, helping them become one of the biggest rock acts of the new millennium. Their album would sell over 15 million copies worldwide, thanks to the singles What's My Age Again, All the Small Things, and Adam's Song, which became massive radio hits and garnered heavy play on MTV. In fact, all three of these songs still receive heavy rotation on alternative rock radio to this very day. While the band had a lot to celebrate, little did they know they were also breaking international law at the same time with the release of the album. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. When it came to the artwork for Enema of the State, the band always envisioned having a nurse on the front cover. It was just a matter of picking the best woman to be on the album sleeve. The band's record label MCA gave the trio a stack of photos of potential cover models to look through. The women who were in the stack of photos were mostly from Playboy and Vivid Entertainment, and the band decided on adult actress Janine Linda Mulder but unbeknownst to the members, they didn't know she worked in the adult film industry. Linda Mulder would appear on the front cover in a nurse's outfit putting on a glove with the band member semi-nude on the back of the cover. Linda Mulder would also appear in the videos for What's My Age Again and Man Overboard, and the photographer for the album David Goldman would talk to Huffington Post where he admitted he wasn't very familiar with Blink-182's music before getting the job saying up until the very last minute the album was going to be called Turn Your Head and Cough and that's why I came up with the idea of a glove. Obviously an enema is not really a glove type of thing. I thought it was a good visual he'd say. There would be three different versions of the cover art. The first pressing of the album showed Linda Mulder wearing a nurse's hat with a red cross and the band's name spelled with a capital B in the logo. The second pressing of the artwork still had the red cross but had a lowercase b in the band's name as preferred by the trio. And finally the third pressing had the red cross removed. In 2013, a fan would post on the group's subreddit celebrating the anniversary of Enema of the State and band member Mark Hoppus dropped by the subreddit to share some information on the album's artwork saying, We were then contacted by the Red Cross that as we are in no way a medical organization, which I would debate, one time I changed a band-aid, we should have not had a Red Cross on our artwork. If we continued using the Red Cross logo, we would have been in violation of the Geneva Convention for real. Thus the third iteration of the artwork, no Red Cross, lowercase b, blank 182 he'd say. The band, according to the American Red Cross, was in violation of Section 55 of the 1949 Geneva Convention that states that no other organization, public or private, can use the Red Cross symbol other than the Red Cross themselves or the Red Crescent. As for Goldman, shooting such an iconic album cover didn't really blow up his career, admitting to Huffington Post. To be totally honest, it didn't have the effect I thought it would. You always think there's going to be one thing that you blow up from, but that didn't really happen. It was just another good thing that happened. Goldman went from working with musicians to, as he put it, working with more, and I quote, literary and intellectual types, as well as working on the CBS show 60 Minutes. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.